Hey guys, John Lee here. I just want to say thank you for tuning in and for checking out the Gravity City YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe and follow our social media accounts so you can stay up to date and get notified with fresh messages and encouraging content as we want to grace your feed with faith. If you love today's message, feel free to like, comment, and even share it with friends and family. Here in Gravity City, we believe in God's vision He has placed in our hearts for the generations. So if you want to partner substantially with what God is doing in our city through our ministry, please check out our website, www.thecrossroadschurch.online. I'm grateful for you. Love you. Here's today's message. Stay blessed. This mask, right? It's a face mask, of course. It's one of the PPEs that we have. How many of you, you're still surviving in this pandemic? Amen. Amen. It's been, what, eight months, right? And you'd see what? You'd see people wearing masks wherever we go, right? The funny thing about this season, I feel like a lot of the things that's happening here, we've already been doing for the past few years. We've been doing it for the past few seasons. It's just that in this season of quarantine, everything has just been exposed. Amen. Everything is exposed. There's really nothing new with how we go through life. It feels different because of the new normal, but in this season, everything is exposed. Are you guys here? Uh, how many of you would agree with me that this season, it exposed your prayer life? It, it's when it's not you just not talking about it. You cannot Instagram prayer life. Thoughts and prayer verses, but the truth of the matter is that you can never Instagram prayer life. You could what? You could um, post a story about your devotional life. You could post a story about your secret place and the verses that you are reading. But the truth is, I think in this season. Your devotional life is now exposed out into the open. You see, in this season, because we are in a lockdown, right? How many of you have experienced a lockdown? I think everybody, not just one city, everyone in the entire world. The globe kind of shut down. You see, when you felt that everything was fine, you were holding things together with different areas of your life, your family life, your career, your future, your relationships. I think that more than anything else as well, in this season, characters and attitudes have been exposed. Come on. Characters and attitudes have been exposed. Lots of friendships being tested. <laughs> Amen. Lots of relationships going through the fire. Well, at first, it's like, oh, 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 thank you, Lord. It's, it's, thank you for such uh, this amazing time that we could spend it together with family. We could spend it together with some friends. But the truth is, it actually exposes everything. You see, the thing about masks is that the mask, have you seen the movie The Mask, the green weird guy? Just kidding. But... You see, what, what the challenging thing of the season, as we're still thriving, I believe that the church was never meant just to survive in this pandemic. The church was always designed to thrive in whatever season. Did you guys hear me? Did the church hear me? God never just wants you to survive. He designed you to thrive in whatever season. But then the challenge about wearing masks is that I'm not talking about this physical mask today. You see, long before COVID, we have been wearing different kinds of masks. We wear it with different kinds of reasons. We wear masks when we're in a family. We have different masks. If it's church time, like, let me put on my Christian mask, right? It's like, it's like how are you, bro, brother, sister? God loves you. In that Christian mask, it's like, how are you doing? Blessed and highly favored. Come on, somebody. It's like. What does that even mean, right? It's like, you, you, we put on our Christian mask. We go through cell groups. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. 
We put on those things. When we go through, when we go home, we wear a different mask. We put down our Christian mask and we put a different kind of mask as well. You see, the thing about masks, if I could go straight to my point today, is that putting on a mask, are you ready for this? Are you guys ready for this? Putting on a mask actually hides what really is going on. All you can see is my eyes. All you can see is a part of me. You don't see what's happening. You see, sometimes the, the sad truth is that there are people that, when you ask them how they're doing, people really would, the normal thing and the normal responses of people would be, I'm fine. You see, you cannot only hide. I'm not only talking about hiding sin. There's some people that are so good at hiding depression. You see, what's a shocker is that there are people that really would, would kind of hurt themselves and they're like self-inflicted pain. And there are some people that would announce to people, um, if you're not going to come to me, I'm going to do this and do that. I'm going to, you know, the, tru- the truth about some suicidal people and some suicides that really took place that are really tragic is that when somebody asks them how they're doing, it's like, I'm fine. I'm okay. But we hide behind the mask. Some people can hide good stuff. Some, some, some family members, because they don't want you to worry, they sometimes hide health conditions. So, so we can hide different conditions as well. What I'm trying to say is that masks, they hide what's really going on. We hide, and, and the truth is, you know, one thing that really bothers my heart is that after salvation, I hope we all went to heaven immediately. After you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the next step wasn't heaven. Heaven is the destination, but that's not the next step. The next step is actually overcoming a battle, not most of the time in front of you, but battles within you. You see, I realized that if we could overcome the battles inside of us, I'm telling you, if you can overcome the battles inside of you, you can overcome the battles in front of you. So why not focus on what's on the inside of us before facing what's in front of us? Amen. You see, hiding into mask, there's like now and like a mask. There's also a verb. Like we need some people mask up some stuff. Now, the verb mask right? So to mask something in the dictionary means to conceal something from view, to hide something, to conceal something from view. And I search a definition of conceal. Conceal actually is defined by keeping something a secret and preventing something from being noticed. The sad truth is that there are a lot of people that have been rescued by grace, redeemed by grace, experienced the presence of God, but then instead of along, somewhere along the way, somewhere along the line, instead of boasting in our weakness, sometimes we conceal the things we don't want people to see. You know what's funny? Is that when you were younger, how many of you had your childhood in a different way? I miss the childhood not in iPads and screens. The childhood that plays in the streets, yeah? You remember those times when you would be proud about your scars? Like, what's up, man? Like, the more the, the, more the scars, the bug sick. The bug seeker you are, like the bug seeker you are, the thugger you are, like if there's such a word. Like you are so proud walking like, see this scar, man, I'm brave, I'm courageous, I'm, I'm strong, right? No, with the soundtrack, ding, 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 banana, sila, di like, when we were younger, we would be proud with our scars, but why is it as we go through life, we begin to hide our wounds from each other? You see, the scripture that I just read in Luke chapter 12 talks about that there's a lot of crowd 
Jesus was with lots of people because everywhere he went, people followed him. Everywhere Jesus went, thousands of people were there. People follow Jesus wherever he goes. If you are, man, just let me speak to some cell groups right now. If Jesus is in your cell group, growth would be natural. If Jesus is in your cell group, the presence of God is there, it should attract more people. But the question is, what do you have? Cell that with Chica time or with the presence of God? Because everywhere Jesus is, it attracts people. So in the crowd, you see, Jesus, I love it, that it revealed the heart of Jesus, that in the crowd, Jesus' primary concern was his disciples. You see, sometimes there are a lot of people that they want to blend in the crowd because you can hide in the crowd. It's like, I want to follow you, Lord, but not so close, just at a distance. People are like the Israelites. They want to witness the works of God. But when it comes to giving total commitment to Jesus, I want the benefits, but I don't want the commitments. That's why in our culture, in our time, friends with benefits are so popular. Relationships with no labels are so popular. Why? Because people want the benefits without actually taking on the commitment. And before you judge people on the world, let me tell you, let me introduce to you, this is happening to a lot of Christians in the church who loves the benefits of God, who loves the benefits of the blessing, who loves the benefits of the promise, who loves the benefits of what worship can do within them, that it can lift them up, but they're not willing to go through the commitment. You see, Jesus was talking about, he's like, his concern, concern was his disciples, and he told them, Watch yourselves carefully so you don't get contaminated with Pharisee yeast, Pharisee phoniness. What am I talking about? What is Jesus talking about in this statement? Jesus was addressing his disciples to make sure as you follow me. You know why Jesus loved his disciples? His 12 was so unique, right? His 12 was so unique because they were real and raw people. When Jesus found Peter, Peter was not a successful fisherman. Peter was at the worst day of his career. How many of you are grateful that when Jesus found you, he wasn't looking for good and perfect people. Jesus found you even at your worst. Jesus found you when you were messy. Jesus found you when you were stinky. Jesus found you when you were at your worst. And Jesus was like, Don't lose that. Why is it that some Christians who got saved radically were not even aware of the moment that we put on? Jesus was like, watch yourselves so that you don't get contaminated with Pharisee yeast, Pharisee phoniness. You see, the Pharisees in Jesus' time were self-righteous men who would put on their own outfits and clothes. Did you know that I did a little study that the Pharisees with their clothes and their outfits, they would have a tassel on every law that they kept. Look at me, I'm so holy. Look at you. Like they would put on so much tassel with every law that they kept. They're like 10 commandments? No. Every single law they could really keep, they would put in on their tassel. Jesus was warning his disciples. Jesus was warning his disciples. He says, watch yourselves carefully that you don't become familiar, that you would lose the realness and the authenticity because it's such a tendency of a human heart that as we go through with our faith walk, you're still there, but you're putting on a mask. You're still serving but you're putting on a mask. Um, And and you know the the funny thing is we think that the little secret stuff that we hide from God, we try to compensate them with our service. So there are a lot of people that would be so guilty and they begin to serve and serve and serve. And I'm here to tell you if that's, if you're serving from that place, it's a matter of time that everything that you're keeping will be exposed.
Jesus was like, don't become like a Pharisee. Don't put on a religious mask. Don't put on a religious mask. Let me read the next verses. You cannot keep your true self hidden forever. Before long, you'll be exposed. You can hide behind a religious mask forever. Here's the deal. How do I know if that your devotional life is still done out of what? Out of authenticity or out of religion? It's this. It's when you are doing your devotional life and things are still being exposed. That's real. You see, every time a man encounters the presence, the full glory of God, Isaiah, when he encountered and when he saw the Lord, the natural response would be, woe is me. For I am a man of unclean lips. You are so holy, God. Why? Because the real presence of God begins to expose the things that doesn't belong to him. Jesus was referring about a religious mask. And what a funny thing in our time. That it's not just people and lost people wearing masks. How are you? I'm fine. I'm okay. You know what really bothers me and strikes my heart? Is that there are so many leaders that sometimes wear masks. How are you doing? I'm fine. I still have my disciples. How are you? I st still love God. But then if you could just witness and expose what's behind the mask, I'm hurting. With the mask, like as a leader. How are you doing, pastor? How are you doing, leader? I'm great. God's good. I'm broken. How are you doing, pastor? I'm struggling with lust. Just recently, one of the greatest, some great man of God just go, went through a lot, some difficult time, man, and it struck a lot of people, but props to the man who stood in and become, humbled himself. Because I'm here to tell you, pastors are not exempted. Leaders are not exempted. So therefore, watch yourself that you don't put on a religious just mask. How are you doing? I'm okay. Truth is, my life is falling apart. The Pharisees would put on the mask. Jesus even refers to them as whitewashed tombs. Crazy. Clean on the outside but dead and rotten on the inside. You see, we have been wearing masks all our lives, but this pandemic kind of manifested it in the physical. Pharisees and self-righteous people could be, look at how much I pray. Don't look at me. Don't look at my heart. Look at my fruits. Look at my achievements. Look at my success. Don't look at me closely. Right? Let me just say, what are the different kinds of masks people put on? Some people put on the I know it all mask. Or sometimes they put on the I figured everything mask. How are you doing, bro? Fine. Okay. I'm fine. I I'm okay. Are you guys here? Question. Why do we wear masks? Why do we put on different kinds of masks? Today's message, I said, this is me. I'm talking about this is the real me. The real you is not defined and it's not based on what you put on you and how you'd look like. The real you is who you are when nobody's watching. But question, why do we put on masks? You know why? It's because we believe the lies. It's the enemy that wants you to put on a mask. Let me expose the enemy in a little while. But hear me to tell you that why do we put on masks? Why? It's because there are lies that we give ourselves into. One of the greatest lies, just uh, let me share that a couple of things, is this. Number one root why people would put on masks is the lie that says, you're not good enough. 
I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And, and, and because I'm not good enough, let me put on a mask that will please you so that I could get the validation that I would crave for. So we, we do this a lot. You know, we do this a lot with pleasing people so that we could please somebody else, since we, we could have fit in, so that we could belong. We would rather put on a fake self. Why? Because we feel and we believe in the lie that we're not good enough. As if Jesus died for you so that you'd be good enough? No. In Jesus' eyes, you were already good enough. That's why he died for you. You see, another lie that we have is that why do people keep on the mask even if they know they're aware that that's not their true self? Second lie. What's the first lie? You're not good enough. Second lie. Nobody has to know. Nobody has to know. And nobody wants to know about the stuff you're going through. Nobody wants to know about the sins that you've done last night. Nobody wants to know the real you. That's a lie. So the first one, I'm not good enough. So it would look for acceptance. People would look for acceptance. Second lie, nobody has to know. Nobody wants to know. So it's what? The root of that lie is shame. You see, the first lie I talked about, it's funny how so many movies, right? So many movies have this plot. The story is like, the guy's not good enough, so he pretends to be someone else so that he could please the girl, right? Recently, I just saw a movie that I really, you know, I was interested. How many of you, come on, if you're honest, don't put on your mask, right? Like, how many of you watch Startup, no? From Netflix. Ah, they were, uh, what? Pastor Johnny watched Korea. Like, shut up, right? Start, shut up. I don't want to put on a mask that I'm, I'm holy. I, don't, I only watch sermons. Like, I'm, are you kidding me, right? But I'm not going to spoil you. But so many, so many, so many times, the plot of movies, right? There's this, what, what's that? The Sarah Burt, what's that? Aladdin. Aladdin. <laughs> Mulan. It's all about deception. And, but the, the, the sad truth is this. If you begin to pretend somebody that you're not, right? The truth is the person is not really in love with the real you. They're in love with the one that you're projecting. There are two kinds of versions, the real you and the projected you. Are you here? The, the, the lie, nobody has to know. Nobody wants to know. It's a lie straight that you could read from the book of Genesis. The root of that lie is shame. The root of that lie is shame. Even the first lie that we're not good enough. You see how the serpent and how Satan that was so clever got um, the woman to eat the fruit was this. He presented it as if that God said you can have everything in the garden but don't take this fruit from the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. And then the devil begins to approach the woman. Why the woman? Not my topic, okay? A different set of discussions. The devil begins to see and point out. When the woman saw that the fruit was good and tasty and good to the eyes and pleasing, the devil offered it to the woman. And says the first, at first, it, it, the woman begins to resist. It's like, no, God said that we will die. You see, what the enemy did was the power of suggestion. Did God really tell you that you would die? In fact, if you eat this fruit, you would become like God. Imagine the lie. Let me break down the lie for you, Gravity City. The enemy was telling man, was telling Eve, and was telling Adam and Eve that at, he presented it as if God was holding back something from them. It made them feel, maybe we're not good enough. Why is God hiding something? And then the enemy said, the enemy said, in fact, did he lie with this? He said, in fact, when you eat of the fruit, you would become like God. Discerning what is good and evil. The problem is this. They were already like God. God already created them in his own image. The enemy is lying to you to think maybe you're not good enough. 
You're not good enough. You need to please God. You are disgusting to God's eyes. Shut up, devil. God loved me, and before he loved me, he saw my sin, and he loved me anyway. It's called grace. It's called grace. Nobody has to know they committed the sin. The first fruit of their sin was shame. They realized that they were naked. So they took some fig leaves and what? That was the first mask in human history, according to its definition, to conceal something. They began to put on masks. They clothed themselves with themselves because they were ashamed. They were ashamed. Nobody has to know. You see, the truth is, if the devil can keep a secret with you, there's nothing holy with something hidden in the darkness. If you cannot reveal it to everybody, check again. Amen. Amen. Whatever is in the darkness has no blessing. Three. Third lie. You see, you'll be hated when people get to know the real you. What's that? The root of another root why people wear masks is fear. What if they won't like me? What if they would not accept me? And the last lie why people continue on wearing masks is this. You see, because if you're going to expose what you're hiding, you're going to lose everything and everyone. You're going to lose the ones that said, I love you. I came to you this afternoon to present a message not only for the first timers, but a message for everybody. Before we started Gravity today, I prayed in the spirit and I said, God, in the name of Jesus, I prophetically declare in this moment, masks will begin to fall off in Jesus' name. It will begin to fall off in Jesus' name. Let me give you some truth. You see, if the devil can let you put on a mask, this is the truth. Get this. When we hide behind the mask, we cannot live in God's blessing. When we hide behind the mask, we can't really live in God's blessing. Meaning when we put on a mask, we forfeit God's blessing because God can only bless who you are, not who you pretend to be. God can only bless and God can only use who you are, not who you would like other people to see. That's the truth. When we, so we have people, we hide behind masks, thinking that we would actually protect ourselves from shame. But the truth is, we are what? We are disqualifying ourselves from God's breakthrough. You know, I begin to realize that, why, why is it that, get this gravity city, why is it that the tendency of the human heart is that it's easier for us to identify and confront other people And to point out different things from them than to confront ourselves. Why is it that it's so much easier to lead other people than to lead ourselves? Does this make sense? I begin to understand this. That the roots and one of the greatest struggle in the Christian walk, it's not the demonic attacks. Attacks can be rebuked and canceled in Jesus' name. The reason why you're not experiencing your breakthrough and your promise is this. It's simply being convinced of what God says about you. Did you get that? Why is it so hard that it's actually easier that we could preach to other people when somebody needs ministering, if somebody needs us, if somebody needs encouragement, when somebody needs hope, when somebody needs a word, we always got a word. We actually have something to say. God says this about your situation. God says that you are more than a conqueror, that you can get through this. But the real struggle is this. Why is it harder to convince ourselves 
with what God says about me. Did you know? And did you notice that it's actually easier to say statements that you are statements in the what if statements rather than the I am statements? What am I saying? You're this, you're that. Relationship, a couple fights. Why are they fighting? Because instead of listening and addressing their own selves, they want to project it on other people. You're always this. You never, those two things. You always, you never. Right? You always fail. You always, right? And you never listen. You never make time for me. It's easier to say, you are, rather than say, I'm sorry. Rather than say, I messed up. My fault. I wasn't listening enough. More than that, this is my deal. If the enemy can, can deceive you with putting on a mask, is this. One of, the, one of God's titles in the Old Testament is that he is the great I am. He is the great I am. So by the spoken word of God, he created the entire world. I always say this, right? So God created the world with his spoken word. What is, what is his title when Moses found him? No, when God found Moses, when Moses encountered God, I am. What's your name? I am, that I am. And if God created us in his own image, why is it that the great I am who loves you and loves me and says something about you, why is it so hard to accept that and hard to actually speak up I am statements? We would rather speak what if statements. What if I'd fail? What if I can make it? What if I'd become like my mom? What if I'd become like the failure that I was a few years ago? What if I would never fulfill what God called me to do? We, we're, it's easy to say what if statements rather than to say, can you guys say this with me? How many of you with so much conviction can say this over you, not over other people, over you? And you begin to say I am statements. Instead of what if I can't do it, what if you say, I am more than a conqueror? I am blessed. I am favored. I am anointed. I am forgiven. I am, when the enemy tries to mess up with you, you're not good enough. I know your secret. You begin to say him with an I am statement. Respond, devil, shut up. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. Amen. You see, it's easy to say amen. Try to say it to yourself. And try to say it in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of a struggle, in the middle of a financial crisis, and you say, I am provided for. I am favored. I am blessed. You see, you think that kiwa woman isulti, God sees my heart. Yes, God sees your heart. But I'm looking for people of faith that would begin to say, I, I believe, therefore I spoke. If you really believe what God has laid in your heart, the Bible says, out from the abundance, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why don't you practice that in the chat today? That when the devil tries to mess up with lies and give you what if, you're this and you're that, you begin to say, I am anointed. I am destined for great things. The truth is, I begin to realize, why is it hard to really say that with conviction is this? You ready? The reason why it's hard to believe what God says about you, it's because more than anybody else, you are more aware with the secrets and the mess that you keep. That's why it's hard to say, I'm forgiven and I'm free, if you know you've been messing around with some secret sins. You can't really say, I am free when you know you have some stuff. And what the devil is so good at is he is so good at magnifying what you've done. That you allow and believe in the lie that what you did defined who you are. I'm here to tell you that you are not what you did. You are who God says you are.
Today I begin to just lay down some foundations in the next few weeks to confront ourselves. You see, all of us have a, we have a room in our hearts. How many of you when in your own house, when there are visitors all along the way or on their way, you begin to win. When there's so much mess and there's so much of the clutter and all those other stuff, you, well, somebody's coming, right? So what you do is you don't have time to clean your house. You hide everything in that dark room. And the thing is, we put everything on the, we dump all our crap and all our garbage in that room. And nobody in his right mind would invite a visitor. Hey guys, if let me give you a house tour. This is my crappy room. This is where I dump all the trash. You see, this is the truth. You know who only knows? The details of that room. You know the you know the one who has access to those details in that room. The enemy. He knows every dirty little thing you ever did. And he begins to play a recording, and he begins to accuse you all the time. The reason why you can really you, the reason why you cannot really fully step into your breakthrough is because there are some allegations and accusations and arguments that the devil can present before you. That you could be on fire for Jesus. And then once you're getting ready for breakthrough, devil points out one argument you did that you never confess. Shut up. You did this. You're an adulterer. You're a liar. You're a fornicator. You're all those stuff. Shut up. What are you talking about winning the world, making disciples? Are you guys here? So we put on our masks because, you know why as well? Because we think, because the mess is inside of us, we think we can just deal and clean it up some other time. So the tendency is this. Lord, I'm going to work on that, but not today. Tomorrow. You know how we laugh about our own rooms and how this is so much true spiritually? You know how the lie of the devil, why he gets you entangled with the same sin that God set you free from is this. Nasugdan naman. Padayo na lang. Nabasa naman, ligo na lang. Are you guys here? Amen. So that's why we put on our masks. Instead of fixing, we begin, in the moment that we allowed all these things to stay in us, you know, the, the, the root is this. Simply because we did not address the things immediately that needs our attention. So because we are too ashamed of that, we begin to wear masks. So what happens? When you wear a mask, the next thing happens this way. First thing I want to tell you about it's the dangers about masks is this. When we hide behind the mask, we cannot live in God's blessing. Number two, deception and dishonesty draws in a counterfeit intimacy. Deception and dishonesty draws in a counterfeit intimacy. You see, the truth of the matter is we all want to be loved. God created us that way, to love and to be loved. The reason why people put on masks is because they are so desperate to be loved. Hey, say that. oh. That's why you'd rather pretend to be someone you're not because you wanted to be loved. But here's the deal. If you are putting on a mask and think that people love you because of who, what they see. Here's the deal. Your dishonesty and deception breeds in a counterfeit intimacy. That's not true love. Let me say that again. 
That's not true love. You know why? This is the truth. People cannot truly love you if they don't truly know you. So girl, shut those. Tell some guys that says, I love you. Shut up. You even don't know me. You only knew me five minutes ago when you added me in Facebook. Are you kidding me? How can you love somebody you don't know? People cannot truly love you if they don't truly know you. You know how to determine the real people in your life is this. The one that knows all your crap and still loves you anyway. But loves you so much. Here's the deal. That person that really loves you and the real ones for you is this. The person who knows all your crap and loves you anyway and loves you too much to let you stay like that. So these people are the ones that say, hey man, get yourself together. Get yourself together. I'm here to tell you that intimacy thrives in authenticity. Ah, amen. Let me tell you this. Intimacy thrives in authenticity. Applied in all kinds of relationships. Number one, a relationship with God. You want to be intimate with the Holy Spirit? Be authentic. That's why another definition of holiness is consistency. Who you are privately is who you are publicly. Cell leader, are you the same person preaching in your cell group when there's people and are you the same person when nobody's there? Or do we put on a mask? Intimacy thrives in authenticity. So we we wear masks because we want love. We want people to love us. So here's the deal. We would rather want people to love the fake us. Are you guys here? Dishonesty and deception erodes intimacy. It's not real love. It's not real intimacy. And here's the deal. Because we're too ashamed to admit it, we'd rather keep on the pretending. Third thing I want to talk about, the dangers of masks is this. How you attained it is what is going to sustain it. Meaning, if you got the job you were applying for with the mask, you got to keep wearing the mask to stay there. If you entered in a relationship with a mask, you're going to have to keep wearing that mask to keep it. At the same time, let me put it this way. Say leader... If you made disciples and you grew your ministry because you had a mask, you're going to have to keep wearing that mask to keep that ministry. Because how you attain it is what is going to sustain it. People say, hey man, fake it till you make it, bruh. That's not a, that's a lie. You know what it is? It's not fake it till you make it. It's this, fake it and then you'll have to keep faking it. Keep faking it. One ma- Did you also know one mask leads to another? Because a lie needs to be sustained by another lie. One thing comes to my mind about one thing leading to another is a character in the Bible named David. A man after God's own heart. A man after God's own heart. In the time when kings were supposed to go to battle, he stayed in the palace. In that palace, he took down his king mask, and the real him was exposed. The real him was exposed. His disposition and displacement led him to the sin of adultery. Adultery led him to the sin of murder. One thing leads to another. You see, if you're a person who puts on so many masks, uh, when I invite the worship team to come, it's this. The truth about having so many masks is this. 
Kapoy. It's exhausting. It's tiring. Can you imagine balancing your life, trying to be someone different in church, and when you go home, you're another person, and then when you go to work, you put on another mask, and you open your cell group, you've got a different mask. Man, I'm here to tell you that it's exhausting. Somebody said that multi-masking is toxic. Toxic. One mask leads to another mask. Get this. And as long as the enemy can keep you wearing one. The funny thing and the ironic thing is this. Gravity City, catch this in your spirit. We wear masks because we're afraid to reveal our wounds and our hurts. But wearing one keeps us wounded. It did not get us healed. It's funny how we hide it because I'm hurting. But wearing one keeps you hurting. As we wear our mask, we remain wounded. The last thing I want to tell you about the dangers in masks is this. Denial delays your healing. Denial delays your healing. You already know you need to repent. You already know you need to open up to your leader. You already know you need to forgive somebody. You already know you need to change. You already know you need to pick up the ministry again. You already know you need to put your hands back at the plow, but you keep denying it. I'm okay. I'd rather stay here. I'd rather wear on my mask. Your denial only delays your healing. Why? Because we can't heal what you conceal. And God couldn't heal what you failed to reveal. We think that uh, I don't need to tell people. God knows my heart or I'm too shameful. You see, let me prove to you through scriptures. First John 1 9 tells us if we confess our sins to God, He's faithful and just to forgive us. If we confess our sins to God, God will forgive us. Forgiveness is assured. But I love it that God designed your healing to take place in community. Because the book of James tells us in chapter 5, verse 16, confess your sins to one another and you will be healed. What the enemy wants is to keep your, wearing your mask. Put on your leader mask. I'm strong. But you can't hold it together. You know, one thing I realize is this statement is so true, even with my life. You are in your strongest when you are most honest. Real help comes when we admit. So yes, you can get your forgiveness from God as you confess it privately. But I'm here to tell you, your healing, God intended to be in community. Let me minister to you real quick. You see, if you want God to change you, God cannot change you if you continue to live in deception. Change happens when we are honest to ourselves and honest to God. You see, your secrets will always keep you and withhold you from fulfilling God's destiny. I'm here to tell you it's okay to have secrets, but make sure the participant in those secrets is not you and the enemy. It's you and your leader, accountable people. And then you keep wondering, because you keep wearing masks. Right? They don't know what I'm going through, of course. Stop wearing your mask. Here's the deal. We hide. We conceal. As if God never knew. As if God never knew us. 
It's a lie when the enemy tells you God doesn't love you. If he knows that or somebody will, will leave you. Here's the deal, man. God, before he picked you and before you were even born, God foreknew you. He knew all the days of your life. He has been in your tomorrows. He has checked with everything that you have. And he says, I'm going to love you unconditionally going to love you no matter what the two stories I want to share as well two verses as we end as I'm going to close now number one is this God cannot use who you wish you were you see if we don't become authentic and real to ourselves we cannot fight battles we cannot fight battles God called us to fight if we don't become who God called us to become. You see, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 to 40. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Quick context, quick story. Goliath was taunting God's people. How many of you are sick and tired of the enemy taunting you? Where is your God now? Who can save you? You're all losers. You're still the same. Enemy taunting you. Enemy taunting you. But then David comes into the scene. And David refuses to let this uncircumcised Philistine, meaning a person not in covenant with God, mess up with God's covenant people. But I want to highlight verse 38. David went to Saul. And then Saul addressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and bronze helmet on his head. You know that story, right? I don't have time to go through, but this is the story. Saul first discouraged David. Are you sure you want to fight? You're a boy. He's a, he's a giant. Okay, because you want to fight him. Wear my armor. Wear my armor. Here's the deal. I love it. If David put on Saul's armor, the credit would have gone to Saul. Maybe he would not even win the battle. Because God can only bless who you are. You see, God's qualification in that moment wasn't a king, was a shepherd boy. And David being a shepherd was his qualification. David did not wear the armor. He says, this is not me. It's not me. It's, it's not me. I'm not comfortable. It's not me. He was so comfortable with who he is and who his God is that he decided to go with that into battle. The next story I want to close with is in Genesis 32, one of my favorite stories. Verse 22. A man called Jacob see that night Jacob got up and took his two wives his female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok verse 23 after he had sent them across the stream he sent over all his possessions so Jacob was left alone I love it that Jacob was left alone you see it is when we are alone that God does his best work in our lives a man wrestled with him till daybreak, and when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was dislocated. And as he wrestled with the man, the man said, Let me go, for it's almost daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Verse 27, the man asked him, What is your name? It's funny how they were wrestling and they didn't even know and introduce each other's name. Because I think the man was a shadow or it was actually Jesus and I believe he didn't ask a question of what is your name he's asking Jacob who are you Jacob who are you Jacob wore so much kinds of mask he was a deceiver he lied he was an opportunist he did all these other stuff he lied to his dad 
He wore a different mask because I think Isaac would prefer his other son Esau because Esau was an outdoorsman. Esau was rugged. Esau was a hunter. Jacob was a mama's boy. That he did, he decided by the help of his mom, Jacob deceived his dad by becoming somebody he's not. So Jacob was always dishonest. But then for the very first time, I get, I think he got tired of all the lies. And he got tired with all the masks. He said, when God asked him, who are you? And for the first time, he admitted, admitted, I'm Jacob. I'm a deceiver. I'm a liar. And in that moment, God blessed him. From now on, you're no longer Jacob, you're Israel. And God blessed him there. But your miracle would not take place when you're not honest to God about who you are. So today, Gravity City, who are you behind your mask? Or I wonder what kind of mask you guys are wearing. Leaders, disciples, I'm here to tell you God knows who you are. You don't have to do something to prove to him or to make yourself worthy. You are already worth it. Who are you? This moment, let it be holy. It's a divine moment. I, I can sense the Holy Spirit wants to move. Quick question. Quick question. Who do you pretend to be? Who do you pretend to be? Who are you? You see, Gravity City, I've got news for you. The enemy has no power to force you to wear a mask. He can only lie to you. But I have news for you. If you are the one that put on the mask, you have the power to put it down. I said, if you are the one who put on the mask because of the devil's lie, you can put it down. You can put it down. You can put the mask down tonight in the name of Jesus. You don't have to pretend. Paul got it right. This is your, I boast in your, in my weakness because your grace is sufficient for me. Thank you for your time in watching this video. If this message has impacted your life in any way, I want to ask you to do a couple of things. Number one, be part of Gravity Friends and Family by subscribing to our YouTube channel and follow our social media accounts to get connected and stay updated with any updates and announcements and new content. Number two, share this video. If it has blessed you, I believe that the portion you receive is not meant for your personal consumption, but it also meant to bless the people around you. The third thing I want to ask you to do is if you want to partner with what God is doing, you can give financially. And, and be part of the move of God in our city through our ministry. Go to www.thecrossroadschurch.online and check out details and information and ways you can partner with us. The fourth thing I wanna tell you is that if you've got prayer requests, if you've got a need, if you need encouragement, hey, we wanna connect with you. We've got a lifeline team. People on standby, ready 24-7 just to pray with you and to connect with you, to minister to your life. We want to stay connected with you. God bless you. See you next week.